Thanks for joining us this week here on East Idaho Newsmakers. I'm Nate Eaton and we are on location at the Colonial Theater in Idaho Falls. Chances are you may not have seen our guest today, but you have heard his music. This is Steve Dorf. He was in town a few days ago doing a show called I Wrote That One Too, A Life in Songwriting. Also the name of your book, yes. which you have here. Mm -hmm. And Steve, let's just start right off the bat some of your songs that you've written that you out there watching have heard. I Cross My Heart, George Strait. Through the years, I just fall in love again. Don't underestimate my love for you. Every which way but loose. You also have television shows like Murphy Brown, Spencer for Hire, The Singing Bee, Just the Ten of Us, Growing Pains, Murder, She Wrote, Columbo, Reba, all sorts of stuff. I mean, you could go on and on and on about this. So you're you're pretty. Uh, you're making me tired well, just geez, listening to you. That no. is a quite quite a <laughs> resume you. there. Thank you. Let's go back to the beginning. How did you get started in writing music? Oh boy, um, that is really the beginning. Um, you know, my my mom tells me I came out of the womb singing, not crying. Um, yeah, yeah I've, I've just always heard music in my head, always, and um, uh, thinking, dreaming up music was uh, uh, was like breathing to me. It was just came when I when I'd be at a little league game and someone would hit a home run and the rest of the crowd was cheering. I was kind of orchestrating the whole thing in my head. Uh, it's just something that um, came very natural to me. And so you grew up playing the piano? Uh, I started playing the piano uh, probably when I was about six. Mm -hmm. my, my older sister uh, was taking lessons and um, uh, she'd be practicing every day for like four hours a day and I could climb up on the bench and play it better than she could so <laughs> wow. um, yeah it, it's uh, just a gift and and um, it's just all I've ever done so you you are musical as a child you go through high school normal childhood yeah average yeah. childhood where were you born and raised New York City New York City okay after mm -hmm. high school what do you do I went to uh, the University of Georgia to try and become a veterinarian. <laughs> um, ran into Chemistry 101 and that was the end of that. <laughs> uh, my parents didn't want me uh, playing for tips in a jar when I was, uh, you know, they, they always thought music was a, a great hobby but not anything you could make a living at. And um, Which in a lot of cases is true, right? It I is mean, true. I, um, yeah, um, any, any creative whether you're a screenwriter or, or an actor or an actress or a, uh, a composer or a songwriter, singer, it's, uh, it's hugely competitive and, um, and the opportunities are, are, are far and few in between. They're really good ones. So. so you decide not to be a veterinarian. Do you switch your major to music? No, no. I, I, um, <laughs> I took journalism because there was no math involved. <laughs> Good um, career. That's why and, I'm in uh, it. No, I, I mean, I joke about it. I, I, people ask me, what what'd you major in in college? And I said, well, partying with, <laughs> with, a, with a minor in, uh, in journalism, and, uh, which I never really did anything with. Um, I was just a studio rat you know every every chance I had I'd cut classes go to Atlanta and uh, hang out at the recording studios there and do anything I could to be heard or seen and gradually uh, started writing songs and pitching them and um, it, it was a long process and so when did you get your first big break I would say my first big break was when I went to Los Angeles uh, to visit and to uh, because I always wanted to do m music for film and TV. Um, I loved writing songs, but, but my passion was uh, soundtracks and scoring, scoring you know, for orchestras. And, um, so when I went to Los Angeles, uh, I, I played on quite a few record dates. I was a session player and then arranging. I was arranging for artists and uh, making those circles and networking and getting well known there. And then uh, Clint Eastwood gave me my first big break with a movie called Every Which Way But Loose. Wow. And you wrote the score for the whole movie? I did the song and, and the score for the whole movie. Wow. Mm -hmm. 
So how does that happen? Do you get a phone call one day and, and, and he says, I want you to do it? Or is that something you submit to them and then they say, okay, finish I it I up? was asked by the music supervisor. They, they had had um, an issue with a song that they were go going to use. And uh, this guy called me in a panic and said, uh, I need you to write a song called Every Which Way But Loose. And I said, what does that mean? He says, I don't know, all, all I know is it's Clint Eastwood riding around in an old beat up pickup truck with an orangutan and he fighting with people. <laughs> I said, oh, that's great. Uh, um, uh, I got off the phone, oh, I said, and when do you need it by? He said, tomorrow morning. Oh, wow. So um, I called my good friend Milton Brown who, who we had written a lot of songs together and uh, we wrote the song over the phone and uh, I played it the next morning for the producer who loved it and then he called Clint and we went over to his office and I played it for him twice. First time you've met him? First time and I was shaking and um, he, uh, he loved the song and he said, uh, have you ever scored a movie? And, and I said, um, I always wanted to, that's why I'm here in California. And he said, well, he said, uh, let's talk about that. And, wow. and that was my that was the big break. And how old were you? Oh, wow. Uh, 30s, 40s, 30s? 20? 30. 30. 30. Yeah. Okay, so is it one of those things that you, you then go and score the movie, but you don't actually see it? You just know what's being told? Or do they oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm given the movie. You're given the movie without music. Yes. And so you're able to watch and get the mood. Yeah. And then you submit it, and then you go to the premiere and all that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. That's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, after the work's done. And the record came out, the song came out, uh, Eddie Rabbit had done the record and it was a monster hit. And, um, and then Clint asked me to do uh, another movie called Bronco Billy and then Any Which Way You Can was the sequel and then uh, I did five in a row for Clint. So. Wow. So once you do one and you're in, work picks up. Yeah. It's. Uh, you know, word gets out, people start seeing your name, they start hearing the music, all of a sudden uh, other producers call, agents call, um, and then uh, I was in London doing a movie called Rustler's Rhapsody, uh, which was a bomb, but I got a call while I was there to do a, a TV pilot, uh, which was a two-hour movie of the week called Spencer for Hire hmm. uh, with Robert Urich. And, uh, so I came back to LA and I did that and that became a hit and then I got asked to do a little sitcom called Growing Pains, which was a huge hit. Which, the the uh, theme song? Well, I did the whole show. Oh, I did, wow. I did every episode for eight years. Wow. And that led to Murphy Brown and that led to Major Dad and that, you know, so it's, yeah, you get, you get on a roll and like anything else, like any, any career. Um, if it, hopefully you're good at what you do and you're not a one-hit wonder. You sure. Know, so. Okay, so you're doing, you're doing the television shows, you're doing the movies. When do you start dabbling with, you know, I Cross My Heart and country songs and other songs? Well, that's a good question that I'm asked pretty frequently. You know, how'd you get into country music? I mean, I grew up in New York City. I didn't see a tree until I was 14. <laughs> um, uh, I couldn't spell country music. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I just write songs. I don't really sit down and say I'm going to write a country song. The truth is, um, I Crossed My Heart, which is one of my biggest hits, was originally recorded by Bette Midler. Really? Yeah, it was. Uh, and I played that song for everyone I knew after Bette realized that it wasn't quite wasn't quite the right marriage between her voice and a song. And did she release it or she... No. She, she recorded it. She but, recorded okay. it and then decided not to put it out, which killed me. Yeah. And, um, uh, and I played that song for everyone I knew for the next eight years and they all said, it's nice, Steve, not one of your best. And uh, I got hired to do a movie called Pure Country starring George Strait and the director um, was desperate for this love song at the end of the movie. And he called me uh, 11th Hour. It seems like it, that should be my middle name, <laughs> 11th Hour. 11th Hour, Steve. Yeah. Um, he called me and, and said, you know, I've listened to 500 songs for this spot. We don't have it. 
I said, well, let me, let me look around and see if I have anything. And I pulled this song out that I always believed in, and I played it for him the next day. He said, that's the song. Why didn't you play that for me in the first place? And you'd had it for eight years. Eight years. And uh, we played it for George, flew to Nashville, played it for George. He kind of went, eh, not one of your best. Um, <laughs> he didn't love it, um, but we twisted his arm and uh, said, look, let's go in and record it. It's perfect for the film. If you still don't like it afterwards, we'll, we'll punt and come up with something else. And of course, he nailed it, and uh, it was a huge hit, and uh, the movie was you know, an iconic movie. The soundtrack was huge. I also wrote Heartland, which uh, out of that movie, and um, which are two of his most well-known songs. You asked me, George Strait, and I think yeah. Cross My Heart and Heartland. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Wow. So, how often does that happen? Where you might be working on something and it sits on a shelf for years, and then you pluck it back out, and here it goes. You know, in my in my history, um, it happens quite a bit. It's, it's very rare when I'll write a song and then two days later someone records it. I may pitch it out of the excitement of, of having a brand new song that I really believe in. And, uh, but it usually, it usually takes a while for someone to, you know, for it to find the right home and um, meaning the right voice and the right artist and the right time. Timing is everything. So. Tell me you, the song that you thought wouldn't be a hit, but turned out to be a huge hit. The, the biggest surprise that you've seen in your career. Coca-Cola Cowboy. <laughs> I don't know if I've heard that. Uh, it was a huge hit by Mel Tillis. Oh, okay. And um, we wrote it kind of as a joke song. Just a f fluffy, fun song in between trying to write a couple of really good songs that never amounted to anything. And somehow it found its way to Mel and to Eastwood. It was in the movie. It came out of the movie Every Which Way But Loose. And it became this monstrous hit. Hmm. And so that, uh, I'm not asked that very often, but that, that would be one that, uh, that was a real surprise. How about a song that you thought would be a smash and then it didn't go anywhere? Oh, I've had a lot of those. A lot of those. <laughs> you you yeah. probably write them and you think this is it, this is the one, and then... Yeah, you, you know, you never know. I mean, I always say it's a fine line between uh, huge success and dismal disaster, mm. and, and I've, I've experienced them both. Huge success is more fun. Um, but a lot of my songs, uh, uh, I Just Fall in Love Again, uh, was recorded by the Carpenters, and then Dusty Springfield, two of my idols, and uh, and was not a hit by either of them and then Ann Murray recorded it and put it out and it was uh, won the won the Juno award and uh, was the record of the year and and uh, so three times was the charm on that one through the years that was such a big hit for Kenny Rogers um, Barry Manilow passed on that song um, Glenn Campbell passed on that song. Unreal. Uh, so you never know. So you don't have really much say over which artist picks up your song. Not, not in the beginning. Now, now I, I do because I, uh, I generally get involved in either the production or the arranging. So uh, it's not like you could say, I want to write a song for Reba McIntyre. This one's for Reba. Or you could do that, I guess, and give it to her. And if she doesn't like it, Faith Hill could pick it up. Just Absolutely. an example. Absolutely. And I've done that. Hmm. I've, you know, I, I did Reba's show, the Television, first, yeah. first uh, year of the, of the TV show, and, we're, and we became good friends, and uh, um, I pitched her a lot of songs that she hasn't done, and, and, um, and then have gone on to get either Winona or uh, uh, Leanne Womack or uh, a bunch of different artists. Oh, Winona's going to be here in three or four days. That's what I saw. very stage, yeah. yeah. Okay, I want you to tell me that the... Are you going to interview her? I, I, I've asked. Well, please tell her hi for I've me. I've asked three times. But my dream interview is honestly Reba. Oh, I, Reba. I interviewed she, Garth she, Brooks last year. And oh, she's, she's awesome. Yeah. Reba's awesome. Garth's awesome. Uh, I wrote uh, a hit for him. It's been about two years now. Baby, let's lay down and dance. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I, I want to go through this list of songs you've written for these artists, and you tell me the song that you wrote. Yeah. Barbara Streisand? Well, I've written four. Barbara, Higher Ground, which was the uh, oh. 
inspirational title song. I'm on her new Grammy-nominated album, Walls, with the song called Love's Never Wrong. Um, she's the one, what were the other two? Oh, a duet with Blake Shelton on the Partners album. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So. Okay, Kenny Rogers, you talked about the Kenny's one. Kenny's cut about five or six five. of my songs. Yeah. Celine Dion? A Miracle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whitney Houston? Uh, Take Good Care of My Heart. It was a duet with uh, Jermaine Jackson. Yeah, I've heard that. Anne Murray? Uh, Anne's cut a bunch of my songs, but the, the biggest was uh, uh, um, I Just Fall in Love Again. George Strait, we talked about. Garth Brooks? Uh, Baby, Let's Lay Down and Dance. Wow. Anybody else? Any other big names? We talked about a few. Mel Tillis. Uh, I mean, is it to the point that you've done so many, you, you just... It is what it is. Is anybody a star to you anymore? Yeah, they all are. I mean, I'm still uh, very enamored and very uh, awestruck by by the talent of uh, uh, some of the, you know, I've been so blessed to have gotten to work with the greatest voices of this generation or any generation, really. I mean, Streisand is Streisand. I mean, I've worked with Ringo. I produced a track for a movie with uh, Ringo Starr. That was an awesome experience. Uh, Michael Crawford from The Phantom of the Opera. Uh, I did some work with Michael that I'm really proud of. So many, you know. That's, that's why I wrote this book. Yeah, tell me a little um, bit about yeah. the book. Yeah, the book is, uh, is it's called, I wrote that one too, Life and Songwriting from Willie to Whitney. And it's basically uh, my memoir of uh, all these um, all these crazy stories and and out of it came me sitting at the piano and and uh and telling the stories and then singing the song uh, songs and and people uh love to hear the stories because that's the real dirt sure and and you know guys like me or uh, i'm like this oz behind the curtain anonymous person that has written the soundtrack of people's lives and they have no idea who i am mm -hmm. You know, because um, a lot of people think the star wrote the song. Absolutely, yeah. But oh, I get it all the time. I was doing a, I was doing a benefit for a BMI, which licenses music, and some guy, I guess, got there late, and and so he missed the introduction and who I was. He just thought I was some piano player uh, playing a cocktail <laughs> hour, and I happened to be playing through the years. I was I was playing the Kenny Rogers song, and he came over and he says, oh, I love that Kenny Rogers song. He says, you don't sing it very well, but, and he gave me a $5 bill. He put it in my wine glass. So, um, hey, so, take that home. And yeah, he has no idea. So How said, often are the artists involved? I guess it would depend on the artist. Involved in? In the songwriting with you. Do you ever collaborate with very them? Very rarely. You, you write it. And, are, are most of these songs solo written by you? No. Uh, I, I collaborate, uh, I would say, about 85% of oh, the wow. time. Oh, wow. Okay. With lyricists. Yeah. I do all the music, and, and I, do, I do some of the words as well, but um, I have so many great writing partners that I've worked with that are so great at, at, at the lyric, that, mm -hmm. um, which is a, really a separate, separate talent. Who's been one or two of the nicest stars you've worked with? Hmm. Most down to earth, relaxed? I would say Celine. Really? Anne, Murray, both of them Canadians. Um, uh, yeah, they're all, they're, you know, Melissa Manchester is always very sweet. And, um, I've worked with a lot of women, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of divas. It's it's fun. I want to ask you who the biggest divas have been. No, I don't think I can answer that. Yeah. yeah. Is there a dream uh, project or or star that you hope to write for or with? Um, you know, not not really. I mean, I, I I'm working with two acts right now that I'm producing and and writing for that are uh, nobody's ever heard of yet. But but it's very exciting to me because I know they're gonna be hits and and um, I know they're going to be successful and and that's fun you know working with younger artists um, uh, there are great artists out there that I, you know if I have the right song and and uh, have the opportunity to play it for them uh, I'd look forward to doing that movies that uh, I, I still love to score you know motion pictures and so I hope to 
keep doing some of that. I love bouncing around and doing different different things. I have a musical opening and uh, a stage musical opening in Houston in uh, April at Theater Under the Stars called Pure Country, which is based on the movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You also have another project, Josephine. Yes, the Josephine Baker story. Yeah, tell and, us about uh, that. Well, she was this iconic uh, African-American uh, who uh, was a war hero in uh, 19, 1941 through 45 in Nazi-occupied Paris. It's a really great story. That sounds really good. And, yeah. and, and will that be a musical yeah, type? Yeah, for Broadway. That's New, great. For the New York stage. What do you do when you get writer's block? I don't. You don't? You know, great question. Get asked it all the time. And maybe I should start saying making up an answer but the truth is I've never I've never had it are you ever able to take a break or is your brain always going with oh another song idea no I take I take breaks I I, uh, I don't listen to a whole lot of music when when I'm when I'm off I, I listen to sports I listen to news I uh, um, you know I do music pretty much uh, 24 7 for at least you know three or four days a week and so uh, uh, yeah, I, I, it's, I'm not obsessed, or but it's uh, something that I'm still very passionate about, and uh, it's what I do. It's my job. You know, you've written songs that, as you said, have been to the soundtrack to people's lives, but even more than that, that have changed people's lives, or, you know, they play when their loved ones are dying, or they're getting married. I mean, mm -hmm. do you comprehend that? I mean, that's got to be <laughs> a pretty big thing. That you know, it, it is. I, I get so many emails from people that say, I got married to, um, I crossed my heart, um, it, was our, it was our song, it was our favorite song. Uh, I, uh, people that say I danced uh, with, my, with my daughter at her wedding to Through the Years, um, it's become more of a celebratory anniversary type song. Um, one of the most touching uh, notes I ever got was from a woman in Chicago. Uh, her daughter was in a serious car accident and she was in a, a coma for, for I think two weeks and they didn't give her much chance to survive and her favorite TV show was Growing Pains and they kept playing tapes of Growing Pains episodes in the, um, in the hospital room and uh, and one day the theme song was playing and she opened her eyes and um, wow that was pretty great wow so yeah I, I appreciate that and I don't consciously sit down and say I'm gonna write a song that's gonna save somebody's life today but no. um, I, I write from uh, I would say most of what I write is, is stuff I've lived and experienced uh, the love songs and the and the uh, and the disappointments and the uh, broken-hearted songs and uh, yeah. You were inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in New York City in 2018. I was. How was that? Uh, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, it's the dream. Um, it was something that I didn't think was ever going to be possible and when it happened um, I got in on the first ballot which was almost unheard of. Yeah, how does that work? Does someone nominate you or <coughs> yes. you put in for it? or? No, you're nominated by a, a board of peers and um, there's no there's no politics involved. It's, um, it's very secretive. You never know until you get a phone call and, uh, and, and, and even when you're nominated and put on the ballot your chances are one in 24 of getting in. Um, they only do one, one. I'm sorry, three, three and three, three. Well, three of twelve in in each category. Uh, there's the performing writer, like John Mellencamp or Alan okay. Jackson. They they got in with me. Yeah. And I was I'm I'm just the uh, just the basic pure songwriter who's never heard of category, and uh, and I got in uh, and the competition was really tough because uh, I really admired a lot of the. A lot of the writers that I was up against, and I didn't think I had a snowball's chance in hell of getting in, at least not the first time. And um, and I did, and it was uh, it's just 
it's you know it's it's the dream it's like a ball player getting in Cooperstown you That's know cool. or, or uh, football player getting into Canton I mean it's just it's forever well you know? congratulations thank you. you thank you, you appreciate it you've definitely earned it what do you say to the young kid out there watching that says oh, I want to do that he plays at the piano every day and dreams mm -hmm. of writing music for TV shows Netflix what do you yeah. say um, be prepared to uh, pick yourself and dust yourself <laughs> off about a hundred times a day on, <laughs> on the journey um, because uh, being rebuffed and, and being rejected is part of the business. Um, and I would say this about actors or actresses dreaming about going to Hollywood or going to Broadway. Um, it's the same with musicians and, uh, and songwriters uh, and artists. Uh, um, it's, it's a tough business, but uh, there's, you just got to put your, put your head down and uh, don't take no for an answer. Very good advice. Steve Dorf, let me hold up your book there. Thanks. It's I Wrote That One Too, A Life in Songwriting. It's available on my, um, on my website, which is uh, stevedorf.com or on Amazon. Great. Yeah. And we'll link to Steve's website down below. You can go uh, check it out. And believe me, we've only just scratched the surface. I have a feeling based on what's in this book, if you're interested in this sort of stuff, the behind the scenes of music you've heard. Thank you very much for thank talking you. to us, Thank you, I Steve. appreciate it, yeah. Appreciate you chatting with great. us, and thank you for watching. Have a good week.